Mr. Adi Sulaksono, please, time is yours. Okay, thank you. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you very much, everyone. Professor Kinzau, uh, Pak Bronto Sutopo, Pak Sutarto, Mas STJ Budi Santoso, and all the participants for being here today in this special occasion. Um, we are going to discuss, for me, one of the most interesting deposits formed by a very typical geological process. You can imagine when you have an intrusion, cutting a sedimentary sequence, you might expect to find this type of deposit, either oxidized or uh, the reduced type one, depending on what the wall rocks are. So, that's more this. Hello. Yeah. Honor to uh, give a talk. And, and also I, um, you know, from my bottom of my heart, I really thank, you know, organizing committee and, and you know, Budi, Adi, and, you know, Matiana. And also I'm seeing my previous colleague, you know, uh, like Bronto and, and I, I'm, you know, also see a lot of other groups from Myanmar, even from Japan and, you know, Poland. So it's, it's a, really really enjoying i mean i i will provide what we have done last two decades in uh, mainland southeast asia and i i also thank to my previous and also uh, staff especially professor swetch mefri and professor clive Barrett, who are key you know this uh a key key member of the group uh, for tectonics and geochronology uh, involved. So I, I really humbly you know uh, the the thank to 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 the you know the all the people involved in this project. What what I'm going to do is the um, there's a lot of scan system uh, in mainland Southeast Asia and Copper and Gold Ridge, and I will give my view on why these oxidized and reduced gun, you know, form formation uh, genetic aspects. Um, and, 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 you know, depends, and you can discuss about that one, uh, you know, you, you agree with my interpretation or not. Before I go quickly, uh, we have uh, this uh, special issue, which is a major, major, you know, contribution to the metallogeny and tectonic of mainland Southeast Asia. It is in uh, 2014. I just go over, you know, quickly uh, run through what are the current status in uh, understanding the, you know, metallogeny and tectonics in North Southeast Asia. And we recently, uh, last year, finished up this special issue in Janet Asian Art Science. It's, you know, based on the GOC conference in Hanoi with Professor. Mr. Fo from France and our colleague from the, uh, the old geology review. There's a massive, you know, about uh, 50 or 60 papers in there with the Professor Yang from China and Zaman Gandhi from Malaya. And we have that uh, special issue. And another one is the, uh, you might be interested, you know, the the rubies, local rubies, why these are so beautiful, so sought after, high quality pigeon blood. So also geographic type being, you know, how you can find this is Mughal or this is from, you know, Sri Lanka or Thailand. So all, all anything you want to know about rubies, also we uh, published a special issue in minerals and uh, with um, Professor Lynn Sutherland from University of Western Sydney. And currently we are coming out this pip, uh, special issue, uh, our group uh, published about 39 papers, it's, it's online now, 
And another one is uh, Professor Kitchen Lai from University of Brunei is putting out this special issue in Frontier and Earth Science. It's still, you can, you can, uh, you know, uh, contribute. Uh, and uh, Professor Kitchen Lai now coming back from to Australia uh, in Western Australia, uh, joining the industry. So that these are the special issue we are working on it. And also uh, the chairman mentioned about that one, Myanmar and, and similar geological studio, London volume for Sumatra and also Thailand. And, and this is the one we, we published a few years ago uh, with Dr. Baba, myself, and then uh, Dr. Micro about Myanmar. And uh, Myanmar is at the moment in, in, in Tamai, but you know, hopefully we will get better to help us, you know, to get a peace and prosperity back back to us, and and you know, uh, help us. And back to uh, Southeast Asia, and you can see th this is the um, um, Southeast Asia, you know, characterized by you know different terrain here. In China drain, Shantai or Sinumasu drain, West Myanmar drain. So sort of these terrain are uh, record terrain where the similar lithology, similar stratigraphy across the country border. You know, country border is man-made. So we, we have this kind of uh, the terrain or crusted blocks. These are rifted off from the northern Goana or northern Australia and coming, you know, accreted and, and becoming a you know Southeast Asia. Uh, and another another important point is the um, there is a Zakai fall, which is the uh, you know dextra strike slip fall, and and then uh, this one is the uh, very similar to um, this Adaman Sea before opening Sumatra and West Myanmar um, are together, and and that's uh, very important for us you know this. Mineralized system we found in here, we can find in here, we found in 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 Sumatra style of mineralization, we might be also finding in, in Myanmar. And another one is this uh, Red River Sucha, which is sinister. So the whole the Southeast Asia is sliding down to take the accommodate accommodated the you know strain from India and Asia collusion. And that one is they call uh, indentation term tectonic or escaped tectonic, uh, and that that's only for the Cenozoic, you know, uh, the the new new tectonic. But the one we are dealing with all the older bodies are from in Mesozoic and Paleozoic. So we are started trying to work on, you know, understanding the Paleozoic tectonic, Mesozoic tectonic, and how relate to this. I mean, mineral deposits and currently a lot of geochronology are doing, you know, tectonic understanding these, these deposits. So another interesting is this, the subduction zone still active, you know, you know, there is a tsunami and earthquakes this happening uh, uh, due to this subduction and strike slipping. And this, there's also full bed, full bed yeah, between the two, you know, terrain or two blocks. Uh, we call here uh, Luai Pecheron Bell and also Trung Song Bell, Trung Song Bell here. And mineral deposits are along this, this zone and, and also uh, kind of the Sutra zone. And these deposits are scan deposits in mainland Southeast Asia, but I'm, I'm not going to talk about this. Taka uh, did a PhD on these uh, deposits in. Uh, Fason uh, Dampi Sucha. And there's a swimming bone in uh, Cretaceous Age, Copper Scans in Myanmar, and Mangaba is also another Cretaceous Scans in Malaysia. But I'm going to focus on deposits in, in, in here. And there's other Sukhothai bear, also very interesting. Now people give it a lot of attention. The least explored terrain, but there's, there's a lot of Origenic gold and, and probably WHMS deposits in here. So uh, people are looking at this uh, across the from Eastern Myanmar to, to Laos and getting into Thailand. So th th this is zooming into the um, 
into the Chung Song Belt. This deposit is a major scan deposit, copper gold scan deposit in here, in in now, uh, in in uh, they call Fukan, and Penos uh, is still mining. You can see the Danish and Great, which is one of the major resources of copper and gold in in uh, Southeast Asia. And I will come back to that one later. Uh, this deposit uh, is hosted in the late Carboniferous Alibamian volcanoclastic rocks and included by the iron type intrusion. These are very important iron type intrusion. And here is a Daka, he did the uh, MSc also language iron. He's, he's a Terra time student work on these deposits as a part of his PhD. And this deposit is the, uh, you know, when you look at the uh, assemblages, uh, the early magnetic garnet scans and, the, and, and followed by the retrograde stage, you know, chloride epidote scan assemblages. And it's, I call oxidized scans, which there's a lot of magnetite. There's no, not much pure type, uh, you know, oxy, oxidized, you know, ox, oxygen in it, magnetite. So the, this is uh, the one uh, here. Uh, and we also, a lot of dating then, and here the, the age of the uh, volcanoclastic host rock is uh, late, um, uh, late uh, early Permian late Carboniferous. Uh, and then also we did the uh, age of intrusion also, uh, 305. And then it, we did on age of mineralization to date the uranium and osmedia also uh, getting at similar ages. So that, that's the, um, looks like, you know, mineralization come after the introduction. Uh, and also uh, there is the, uh, the you know, magnetic early progress scan. And then many uh, the, uh, massive late parai. And I, I would um, appreciate all our mute. Uh, all, uh, uh, unmute your, your, you know, uh, system. And, and also the goal is in, in this, you know, the, the early magnetite, uh, magnetite, uh, on its concept. Yeah. And uh, also another one here, uh, this Sipon area in here, uh, also, sediment hosted gold and also scan, copper scan in there. Uh, and, and you can see the, the, the uh, you know, sediment hosted is 83. And then there is a substantial copper resource associated with the scan systems in, in this simple mining district in, uh, in Lao, you know, along Chung Chung Bay. And Paul did a PhD on this one, and the boy is now working as a Exploration manager is big now in exploring copper, copper in Lachlan Fulbert in Australia. And you can see here, this, this is a goal, uh, originic goal, which, uh, or sediment hosted goal, I'm not going to talk about that one. But next to this, this uh, goal, there is a copper scans. And then that's very interesting because they, they, this discovery is also very interesting. They see this red oxidized you know, river in, in the river. So they follow up this uh, and then they, they against the boat, you know, uh, explorer, geologists are saying, you know, uh, they don't want the you know, boat. So they against the boat, boat and then follow up the, you know, that, that uh, oxidized zone. And then they found this. They are interesting is this, this is, uh, the copper is in the super gene zone. Uh, and then uh, in, in the retrograde zone, super gene and the flat line. So they got a lot of good money on, on, from the copper, you know, the, 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 this system. Uh, you can see the different stages uh, are well, not going to do. Uh, early uh, different retrograde stages. And then Paul did in uh, the, um, uh, here, uh, 
Uh, I will appreciate, you know, people unmute you on microphone. Uh, mute. Pak Sugeng. Yeah. So they, they, they Yeah. Uh, here, Sorry, here, Professor. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's yeah. clear. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I, I appreciate it. And then please unmute you off. You are. Yeah. Uh, here, here is the uh, central, central, you know, sort of light bell. And, and sort of we, uh, substantially, not even substantially, uh, it's sort of, reasonably well mineralized this this light bell and you can see the the, the deposits in here and and you know, we've got light bell uh trunk song bell which is coming from Lao through thailand and and now a lot of people are looking at into the cambodia this bell going to here and i'll come back these these deposits later uh zooming in this uh the light bell Light bear is the, uh, you, you can see the, the, this is the full on deposits. And here is the Lao, this side is the Thailand, this is the Mekong River. And then here you can see the, the Gossens, is, uh, you can see the Gossens. I'm not sure this deposit will mine because of the environmental issue in there. But here Tira did a um, uh, honest on this full on, full on deposit. I'll come back a little more detail. Uh, describe these deposits. And then here is the uh, Penos uh, my magnetite scans. Uh, and this this one is produced from a lot of pyridite and gold. Uh, I'll come back in more detail on these deposits here. And and these two, this uh, also Penos still own this one. And this one is uh, mined by different people uh, currently, um, you know, mined by, uh, I, I, I couldn't follow who, who is mining, but there is a substantial goal in there. Scan deposits are small, but they are high grade. So this is a good target if, if for the junior company. And then there is a, these deposits are hosted in different ages of host rocks. You can see the uh, Debonian, Palmian, and Carboniferous for uh, for one, for two. And, and then they are, you know, sort of, these are the um, magnetite rich and then also include pyridite rich. So I'll, I'll go describe these different deposits uh, in the next few slides. And this one is the PO, PO1, which is uh, the uh, oxidized scans, a lot of magnetite, and hosted in a one sub formation, which is sedimentary rocks, uh, sea stones, and um, Limestone, sandstone, again, you can see typical early magnetite carnet and followed by chloride, uh, epidote, and, and chocopyrite. And the, we did a dating and then I type again, uh, we did a lot of chemistry, I type, and the H is 248, uh, which is early to middle tricy. And then we did other lisa ablation. Biodite is not bad, but you know, for biodite, but sometimes this is not. Not reliable. Sometimes give you the you know resetting ages, and then rhenium osmania H mineralizes also tries it. So that's also we we pin down the you know H of intrusion and H of mineralization. Uh, and put put two is the uh, deposit they call Fudongdian oxidized, and again magnetized scan early magnetite potassium alteration and tertiary stages. The H is again early to middle triasis. And this is the Dr. Sobong Kositano. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he passed away when, when he was doing uh, a retire. And then he, la he, he loved soccer. So they make a soccer, soccer game for him. This is the last I, I got from him. And then he got a score and he jumped. And then he never come back. So it, it is a really you know, great loss for us. Uh, and from Thailand, and he he is the, the best and the most you know uh, charming to do collaboration with him. 
And another one is further down Frenchman mine is again Lake Trice ages, this is garnet peroxide, and you can see followed by retrograde assemblages. And that bed now going into Cambodia, and there's a lot of exploration going on in Cambodia. And also chasing also probably, you know, these guns are as affected to buffering. So that might be also uh, looking, uh, looking into Cambodia also. And Poulon is the, uh, at the uh, oxidized guns. And I, I might spend a, a little bit of more time on this, this deposit is uh, Deponia H, volcanoclastic uh, rocks and uh, together with limestones and then prograde uh, massive garnet uh, and, and then followed by retrograde state. People call retrograde state, it's, it's very funny, but it's cooling, cooling stage. So that might be from about 500 and it's retrograde stage, you know, chloride epidote and will also coming into, you know, like 200, 250. So we, we did a dating late bonia post rocks uh, and then the, the age of intrusion we did and that is the uh, early Triassic ages. So I, I might go a bit on a little bit more about geology. Uh, here are the uh, full on deposits that, that the limestone, which is, you know, fluid comes in, replace these um, limestones, you know, I'm from, you know, the, the, when intrusion comes up, uh, the alumina, you know, uh, magnesium, iron, or replace the one from internal scan, scan assemblages. So the age of force rock is Devonian. Uh, you can see this, and we call it Devonian ages, the, the volcanic plastic force uh, the force rocks. And also scan uh, here, uh, magnetite carnet scans and also uh, intrusion is also you know carite and and i type also nine cent and then these ages are uh, 244 which is uh, again early tries ages and th this is a uh, scan assemblages you see the garnet and the dye uh, and the scans extend also into uh, the um, Forming into you new know, scan, you know, magnetite plus dioxide, and then also followed by these, you know, retrograde assemblages, which is epidote and you know, chloride coming, replacing to the earlier, earlier uh, prograde or stage, uh, the carnet and peroxine. And, and uh, Tira did a great job. You can see the um, the garnet is very much endrodite, you know, uh, a lot of iron in it. Endrodite gosolites is, is less, uh, is calcium. Then. And then also uh, dioxide also here is the, uh, not hidden but by much more, which is dioxide. Uh, endrodite rich garnet scan is also another point uh, telling the, um, the um, oxidizing environment, but not necessarily. We have to get uh, sometime uh, also in the uh, reduced scan also we, we find endrodite garnet rich scans. Uh, but I'll, I'll come back to that one uh, to give you more information, more evidence uh, to distinguish the uh, reduced and oxidized scan assemblages. And also we look at the flow inclusion here and th this is a group zone here this is very important when you go to primary or secondary, all inclusion should lie along the group zones. So here is the, uh, also uh, lucky to find the uh, fluid inclusion in, in Ghana. Uh, and this is the type one, liquid and paper rich inclusion. Uh, type two is the, uh, the hematite and calcite also in it, Ghana, here, calcite and hematite. Uh, but the type three has uh, also saw inclusion. So they, they say, um, again, type four is uh, just liquid paper inclusion. And, and then these are uh, high temperature, uh, high salinity because the salt crystal since yeah. It's, it's very much similar to, you know, porphyry, gold porphyry system. And, and we compare here other 
uh, deposits in uh, here is a full on, you know, high, uh, high temperature, high salinity. You can see high salinity and other, other uh, the uh, oxidized scans and compare in here. Uh, and the, another one is uh, Futafa here. Uh, Futafa is the, uh, we call reduced scan, a lot of pyrotide rich, reduced scan, uh, and no magnetite in there. And full on, this deposit is Spamian crystalline limestones, shale. This is very important and intruded by triacic canodiorite and microdiorite. And this is the reduced scan. I call it juice scan because pyrotite rich, uh, Rosme exo scans deposits, and then early garnet barocene followed by retrograde this pyrotite rich scan and together with gold in it and bismuth and telluride also in it. And, and this is the uh, oxidized uh, uh, rocks, weather rocks, post rocks. Uh, the uh, uh, mostly, you know, weather out of the sedimentary rocks. Uh, and then the intrusion is highly to middle triacy H. And then the, the, the dike is the uh, 221. Sometimes you can get an H hominalization, you know, figure out like that deposit is associated with the uh, this granodiorite intrusion, a uh, fluid pump out from this granodiorite. But again, the, the ozone is, you know, cut by these dikes. So these dikes are cutting the dike. Ozone is later than the uh, mineralization. So this H is 221. So we can figure out the H of mineralization is about 245 and 221 between that one. Sometimes you are lucky you find a uh, moly uh, H and to get the mineralization. So, so there's a lot of, a lot of uh, controversy about uh, current becoming, when rhenium and osmidium or molybdenum come out, ah, this is, you know, uh, fantastic, you get an H of mineralization. But more and more later, this also can be resetting. So you gotta be careful when you see the moly H's. And, and you can see here uh, the host rocks, shales, shales, a lot of shale host rocks. Uh, the, these are the very critical to make it, you know, reduce scans. And I'll, I'll come back to that one uh, later. And, and you see the uh, Ali, Ghana, and the outside, the uh, progress stage. And, and then, you know, later, fluids cool down and then a lot of uh, water rich fluids and and then empty balls and and coming into that one uh, and and together with sulfides that stage most of the uh, the uh, scans coming during the um, late stage you know the core come together with this sulfide also copper and, and you can see the replacement lectures here so the, the, um, uh, that's, that's a good thing about scan. You can get the scans in uh, early stage, progress stage. And, and also you can get the uh, copper and gold. And then you can also get the copper and gold in, during the retrograde stage. So it's the double, double chance. Uh, good thing about scans is, uh, and, and here you can see again, uh, the late, you know, coming into uh, minerals and then dioxide and garnet, and then the sulfides are coming later. This and people later uh, replacing the early garnet. Um, and, and we did also um, the, the, the garnet chemistries. And you can see Fulong is uh, most uh, endotide rich and the Frenchman mine. So we did this. Uh, although not exactly showing, you know, um, the, the uh, to distinguish oxidized and reduced scan because you can see full on 
uh, for the file also reduce gun also fit in here. But again, but that, this one is different. That when you look at the dioxide here, uh, Futafa is much more hydrogenated, you know, peroxide than the other other oxidized scans in here. And 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 the sulfide is coming. Uh, the gold is coming together with sulfides uh, at the late retrograde stages, together with the um, you know other copper mineral. Uh, and you can see here. Uh, the gold comes together with pyridine, reduced, uh, and, and also retrograde stage. Um, and you can see the sometimes gold locked in the pyridine, and, and uh, together with also uh, other bismuth minerals uh, coming in, in, in the tellurites also in, in the uh, retrograde stages. And these tellurites are also. We found a lot, a lot in uh, orogenic gold in in, in Yama. Uh, tellurite is also critical metal. Uh, and fluid inclusion, we found uh, three types of uh, two types of fluid inclusion. One is the two phase, and and now a lot of catalumins uh, to make it. You know to distinguish or secondary, and and most of the uh, fluid inclusion uh, should lie along this group plane uh, of uh, to to make it. You have to make sure uh, you know your fluid inclusion is primary, and then type two is the salt rich inclusion, and then another one is the uh, the um, you know ferro ferrosmolite also inclusion in there. But we, we identify with that. And sulfide, uh, you know, cross vein late, late stages, the outside and sulfide. Uh, same blades and pyridite, uh, there's a reduced scan. So, also, the cool is coming, still coming in late, late stage, you know, into the um, cross vein, uh, coming. Three stages. This one I show already. Yeah. So the um, uh, homogenization temperature of the uh, liquid inclusion is a um, point nine salinity and and then one hundred eighty two to eighty one. And for the salt bearing inclusion, uh, the um, temperature are very similar, but very saline, very saline because we, we found a lot of salt crystals. So there, there is the, uh, uh, the saline uh, inclusions, you know, late stage saline inclusion coming together with the gold. And, and then also that fluid is, is reduced uh, another one is the uh, we did the fluid inclusion and then we see a lot of reduced carbon uh, and that also suggesting you know the oxidized fluid react with the uh, shear in the host rocks and then become a CH4 uh, methane reduced fluid so this is consistent with the uh, uh, shear host rocks and the reduced character of the uh, system. And then I just mentioned this uh, ferro-pyrosmolite. Uh, this is normally in OCG, you know, they found Cloncari district in Northwest Queensland, Australia, commonly found in the copper lead and zinc deposits, uh, mostly we call IOCG. Uh, but for the scan system, I, I didn't hear anything. Uh, in the literature. So we found this one uh, is in, in the scan system, first time the, the um, uh, ferro virus small light. And, and we did a sulfide isotopes. Sulfide isotopes, as you can see, uh, you know, the, the, there's a wide range of sulfide isotopes from, you know, positive to negative. So this is the sedimentary sulfur. 
uh, th this is the uh, uh, mostly you know magnetic surface around zero. So and, and that that also something telling us reaction with the, the fluid react with the um, you know in the sedimentary rocks and then the sedimentary subpar coming into the system. Uh, so there, there is another indication of the uh, reduced nature of the uh, the fluids system. And, and also we compare with other oxidized scans, uh, you know, PO1, PO2, mostly these are around zero and maybe, you know, react with the uh, volcanic, you know, host rocks and maybe change to a little bit negative, depends on, you know, yeah, but when reduced gum coming into reduced gum, there's a quite a wide range of uh, sulfur I still value, which is telling us sedimentary sulfur and react, reaction with the, uh, with, with the host shear sequence. So th this is uh, also another point I want to point out how reduced gum form and, and you know, uh, the difference between oxidized scan and reduced scan. And that we think that because the fluid react with these shales in the, in the system. So they, these shales are very uh, crucial in, in making the reduced fluids. And we have a 2010 SEG field trip, and then I'm showing all the shales at the uh, Futapa mine, which you know, making the reduction as a, 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 a of the oil forming system. And that's what I want to talk about it. Uh, you know, no matter what is the uh, lithology of post rocks, it can be uh, volcanics, it can be, you know, cell stones. Uh, and and then when there is a reduced fluid, that the, the fluid come out of eye type, you know, that, that fluid come out of eye type. Uh, and when this come to reduce, coming into the volcanic rocks, oxidized sequence become oxidized. But when there is a redundant in the system, become a reduced scans formation, which a lot of pyrotype. And this one has a lot of magnetite. But uh, you can argue it, uh, we see, Working in the in the um, you know Luai and also Chongchong mainland Southeast Asia, we find that th this is the uh, you know critical control of the lithological control. So uh, my point is the um, uh, the geochemistry of the fluid type of you know intrusion is not much important. The main control of the formation of oxidized and reduced scan is the host lithology. And, and if there is a uh, sedimentary, you know, shales, reduced sequence, pyrotype, and then when there is the uh, oxidized sequence become a magnetite, you see same thing, you know, uh, uh, Fukan, you know, and Popanik, uh post rocks, and Fulong, and uh, when you get into Futapa, there's the pyrotype. Uh, a lot of pyrotype, a lot of shields in there. And the other is, uh, I may not have time to go through this, this stuff. We did a lot of dating of each scan, scan deposits in Southeast Asia. Uh, but some are, you know, not really encouraging or the potential of ages and just giving at the setting ages. But it, it's when you get to Zakon, uh, it just is really interesting. This gives you the, and then also together with rhenium and osmidium. So we see two different age of mineralization, age of volcanisms, intrusion. First one is Lake Carnifarous and Ali Palmian you know, along Trungsunga. And another one is the uh, Lake Palmian and Ali Triassic ages, another another age of mineralization, very important to magnetic and mineralization even in Southeast Asia. Uh, 
you can you can say about this one, you know, uh, an Ali uh, Lake Carboniferous Ali Pamian, so so bad form, uh, and and also uh, we might talk about this tectonic control uh, in some other time. Uh, the earlier time probably more more mineralized, and then later. Uh, this Chongzong bed destroy and another arc form uh, in the late Tamian and Ali Triassic, and then Loi bed form. And in along this Loi Chongzong bed, there's a lot of copper uh, gold. And, and also, same time, the Sukhothai is the uh, original gold. And probably uh, that may be not true. Uh, these two bed may be parallel, you know, sort of. Bear and and maybe you know there's a lot of work to do in in northern Lao and eastern Myanmar uh, and that that bear is uh, highly mineralized and uh, we we want to understand more on the Sukhothai bear uh, and, and and Laos and and eastern Myanmar uh, that one it's, it can be also copper and gold even uh, or copper and they are just different. You know, style of mineralization we are seeing. That's these are the uh, thing we, we like to study more. And, and then later are these the uh, Simumasu come in and colliding this, and then the cluster melted and a lot of tin and tanks. Uh, this is also very critical for for Southeast Asia because there there's this deposits. You know, tungsten is now a critical metal. So, and, and many other lithiums and other cobalt, you know, might be, you know, forming during these <coughs> metallogenic ep episodes. So we, we like to understand throughout Southeast Asia uh, in, in about this uh, even, you know, collusion and post collusion and even fluids coming into. So <clears throat> in conclusion, uh, and post lithology is the major control of the formation of oxidized and reduced scan and each our chemistry of the associated intrusion. And reduced scan are uh, considered to be, you know, important for exploration target in right tronsong bear plus in other parts of Southeast Asia, like, you know, now people are looking at a lot in Cambodia, uh, maybe you know, some other time we might be talking about this. Uh, the the current understanding <clears throat> coming into Cambodia these two pair and recently uh, a month ago we have a conference in Cambodia uh, there's a new information coming up uh, many junior are also you know looking into even a major you know company looking into Cambodia also the 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 Tromsom bear also going into Cambodia. And let's explore before and Roy Bear also coming into Cambodia. So it might be interesting in, in near future. There may be a major discovery uh, in uh, Cambodia as well as Eastern Myanmar, which can the, the, the Loi maybe you know pop up in in uh, Trung Song, uh, pop up in in the uh, you know this part of uh, Lao and Thailand and Eastern Myanmar. So Thank you very much. Uh, anyone want to visit Tasmania, come and join us. And then I um, leave, you know, I, I talk quickly because people can discuss and, and you know, the comment. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Orkinso, for a very interesting talk. So it's now time to, time for uh, the discussion. So if anyone have a question, you can raise your hand or just uh, ask directly to Professor Kinzau. Okay. Uh, Mr. Arif Idrus, please. Hello, Professor Kinzau. Hello, hello, Arif. Yes, hello. Yeah. Hey, hello. Uh, see you again. So all those virtually. Yeah, Thank you yeah. very much for the uh, outstanding uh, uh, delivered uh, uh, today. It's very encouraging us uh, to, under 
to uh, better understand for better understanding the uh, scan deposit. So I have uh, uh, two questions related to the your 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 material. The first one related to the fluid inclusion study. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> as you mentioned that the uh, the typical fluid inclusion present in a scan is not uh, is very similar to the porphyry systems, including the presence of uh, uh, a solid uh, uh, daughter crystal. Uh, yeah. So halide, for example. Yeah. But uh, if you see that uh, the data showing that uh, the saline, the, the, although the salinity is very high, so nearly forty uh, weight percent NaCl, NaCl equivalent, but um, uh, the temperature relatively low. So yeah. actually, uh, what the fluid source of this? Uh, this is seawater, or if you're talking about this uh, related to the magmatic fluid, it should be a uh, high temperature, <clears throat> but it is showing this very, very low temperature. Yeah. This, the second one is related to the, um, the presence of bismuth, very interesting in a scan system, <clears throat> both uh, high temperature copper gold uh, scan and also uh, in the uh, low temperatures uh, PBZN also, uh, the, the bismuth, the bismuth telluride is uh, always present. This is very interesting, and it could be a, in the future it could be a, a, a side product uh, because this is one of the critical uh, mineral. Yeah. Right? So actually, uh, what geological control the presence of the bismuth actually uh, yeah. in, in scan? Uh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, so the first question is the uh, fluid inclusion, and the, the fluids is, you know, at the Ghana stage, uh, they said about 300 and, you know, something, uh, which can transport, you know, copper or gold. And, and then because the, the system cooled down, so the, when the system cooled down, that's become a lower temperature. Mm -hmm. And gold is mostly, you know, like, by sulfide complex, you can you can transport it by sulfide complex. The, the, the debate is whether the early stage, you know, uh, chloride complex will come in like a for free. You know, people are saying chloride complex, which must be higher temperature, you know, may, maybe 400, 500. Mm -hmm. uh, but but the, the gold still can transport as a, you know, by sulfide complex. Uh, still coming in. Clo uh, copper is okay. You know, you can you can bring in at the low uh, 200, 250 chloride. You know, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> chloride, chloride is not sure. Yeah, uh, the bisulfide is still coming into uh, chloride for for the uh, chloride complex is okay. I, I'm talking about go go complex bisulfides. So I I I'm not. Uh, worry about that much of you know temperature, and because they, you see the lower temperature range is cooling down age, but that when the gold and copper comes in at the higher temperature, you know the stages. So salinity is like I I will not uh, disagree with you. Uh, it might well be you know other other source comes in because too much high salinity, but. You know, it might be brines comes in mixed with the, with the um, you know uh, magmatic brine. So that we have to do a bit more on more on this um, uh, source of the you know uh, the fluids. Uh, but the salinity is very high, so it's you can it's good for transport or any metal. You know salinity. The other one is the uh, basement. And, and now, if you look at the transport of bismuth, uh, we thought before earlier, you know, even we use as a bismuth as a high temperature magnetic source uh, when you see the bismuth. But now uh, there's a lot of uh, the, the data coming out. Bismuth can also transport in the, in the low temperature, you know, 200, 250 bismuth can, can transport it. So uh, <laughs> but, but we, we, we still have to find 
tellurium, tellurium. Um, and and we found a lot of tellurium. And there's a paper I, I can give you uh, on Zomin and paper, you know, along Orogenic go uh, scan around in Myanmar. Uh, all the Myanmar Orogenic go are very, very tellurium rich. Uh, but anyway, it will be good. You know, tellurium is recently uh, the paper yeah. come out. Tellurium. Tellurium. Uh, I think you are right. The tellurium, we should look at it more tellurium. And then if you you know look at back in this system, we can see a lot of tellurium mineral. Uh, we just say, oh, okay, bismuth. But the bismuth and tellurium sometimes coming together at, at the late stage, late stage in, in the retrograde stage, together with gold. And you can see in 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 the uh, you know the, the mineralography, you know, or paragenesis. There's a lot of a lot of bismuth and tellurium. Uh, I don't know. Maybe later bismuth might be becoming a critical matter. I don't know. Yeah. All right, Professor Kinjo, Thank you very much. You. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Arifuddin Idrus, and. We have uh, another question from Fakih Alfian. Fakih Alfian, please. You can Thank talk. Thank you. Yeah. Can you hear my voice clearly? Yeah, it's clear. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Kin, uh, very good presentation. I just want to make sure, uh, first, any relationship in between tectonic setting with the formation of oxidized or reduced carbon. Beside the formation mainly controlled by lithology of host rock, uh, the, the comparison between pyrrhotite, magnetite, as you mentioned before. Because uh, as, as I see in the Loi fault belt in the Thailand has oxide and also reduced carbon. That's the first question. And your research mostly in the Myanmar, Thailand, in its surrounded area. Uh, do you have any insight or suggestion going to the south or to the Indonesia? Because the accretion, accretion of Banda block or southwest Banda to the Sunda land uh, involves a magmatism in the West Borneo. Uh, it represents by we have a deposit of Ruais Khan and, and Baus Khan in the Malaysia. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Kim. Yeah, right, right. Oh, that's a, that's a very good question. And and we, we still have to, to do a lot of a lot of more work. I, I think that that's the uh, always you know metallogen metallogenesis controlled by the tectonic. Uh, but again, we don't know much about, you know, like um, source. But basically, when you come to tectonic and, and you know, copper or gold, what, what people are doing is to look at the zircon, you know, zircon uh, chemistry. So when you look at the zircon chemistry and, and when you do the heftier, you will see mental signature, you know, or the uh, crust signature. That that's a very important. That, that people people working in uh, a lot in Australia now, and 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 what happened is when the subduction comes in, like in, in your porphyry system, you know, like any porphyry system, when the subduction comes in, when the mental mental source, mental source is the uh, uh, signature. That copper comes in. A crusted source is not 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 good for you know copper. It's it's good for Tin and tungsten with post collusion. So the tectonic control uh, is important, but we need a lot of data. You know, like and then also you look at the cerium, you know, concentration, and and that also you can see, you know, the oxide nature of the cerium rich oxide nature of the you know sort of fluids. Uh, a lot of people working on on the porphyry system now. Uh, and we have a project at the moment. We we dated a lot of zircon at the moment. Uh, we we did a lot of zircon. You, you see that one H dating, but we didn't do the properly the chemistry and hefnian. So we going back all our sample, and and one of the uh, Thai student Peter Bon Peter Bon is looking at this his, as his PhD. So we we collected a lot of sample from Lao and like Fukam and you know uh, many other. So we look at the, the uh, zircon again, and then that zircon is, um, you know, hefting also uh, rich in 
uh, where it is a plot, you can do it, you know, it's above the line, uh, they, they call uh, mental source. And, and then Loa is the crusher. So I, I might go to some of the, uh, actually I give a talk about, we, we have a kind of primary data. So uh, I think also uh, in Indonesia, you should look at this, all the Sakon first, Sakon. Sakon is not only for age now, people are using a lot for the targeting and, and source of the fluids. So if it's mental source, mental coming in, uh, a lot of big buffet system, you, you look at it, and uh, mental signature, you can see that one. And when the cluster signature, uh, the Zarkon gives you tin and tungsten, your you know, rare arts and, and maybe critical matter. So we, we need to do a lot of work. Uh, at the moment, uh, I think uh, we need more PhD students, more students, economic geology. So that, that is, might be, you know, we, we know they control the tectonic control, the mineralization, metallurgy, but we need the data. We have to do more work. Uh, and and that, that's the point. And what is that? another question? Uh, where we like to, to do more, like you got this big, you know, um, scan system, buffer system, but look at, you know, Irin Jaya, you know, that, that look at this system and then also Sumatra, this, uh, you know, whether the house is up on, you know, chemistry look like. So that, that is the um, uh, area, you know, we should be doing. And uh, I might be another time, you know, give our preliminary results, uh, how we are getting at it, you know, the, um, the you know, targeting, you know, which deposit, which area is the, uh, for major, major porphyry copper deposits. And, and it turns out we don't find any porphyry yet in mainly South Seas. We found porphyry related scan deposit. You, you know, porphyry, you know, disseminated, you know, uh, electron probe, you, you look at, you know, and these disseminated big, huge body. But people can use the scans and then deep drilling, high separation, deep drilling. And that, that's why we wrote in our special issue. Uh, we found a lot of deposit, but our next, next challenge is the uh, how we, target the deeper, you know, deeper system, deeper, you know, environment. Uh, so we, we have to, to do a lot of more research. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fakih Alfian. So Thank another you, question. Ready. Yeah. So there is another participant raising his hand, Mr. Aung Myotu. Sorry if I spell wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Uh, morning, Professor. My name is Aung Myotu. Um, yeah. Now I am in Finland. I would like to know one question. Uh, my question is, uh, magnetite can be dominant or present in the reduced scan system. I mean, especially in the progressive state and then later retrograde state, state is the abidose and chloride. And then, yeah, mm -hmm. go, later go associated with the periodite in South High State. So, magnetite can be present or no, Professor? Yeah, yeah, this, this is fairly, uh, you know, sort of uh, fair question. And although I'm talking about reduced scams, is the uh, a lot of periodite, and and then magnetite is the oxidized scams, but some of the scan system, uh, both you will see both. But the um, dominant, you know, uh, in this system, you see more pure diet for the reduced scans. And because the fluid can change, and, and even you, you look at the garnet, you know, the, we scan throughout the garnet zone. So turning the fluid can be, you know, change. Uh, it's telling you the fluid, you know, change because the garnet zone and and some crossover rich and enterodite rich. Enterodite rich is the enterodite is the iron rich Fe two O three rich garnet, and crossover is the um, you know calcium, uh, magnesium uh, garnet. So we we see the changes in uh, fluids or all the system, 
but it can be, you know, um, magnetite in early, early stage, but in the retrograde stage that uh, most of the reduced guns are, you know, a, a lot of oxidite, uh, reduced, you know, pyridite in there. So I, I think you, you, you can get it, uh, you know, yeah, by that way. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much, Professor. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. So another question, maybe from student. Uh, hello, Ayman. Uh, yeah. Yeah, please. Uh, okay, uh, thanks uh, for the time, Pak Adi Noksono. Uh, hello, Professor Kinzo. Uh, thanks for the great presentation. Uh, my name is Muhammad Nafal Aiman. Uh, I'm one of the undergraduate student from uh, UPN Veteran Yogyakarta. Uh, yeah. I have uh, one question that uh, about controllers current deposit. Uh, and the question is, uh, what kind of uh, process which can control the properties of uh, magma so that it has more oxidized or reduced properties? Yeah, I... I... I think that that's a good point, but you, you see, I show you the, um, the magma. Magma chemistry uh, is not that much control. We, we, we don't find it uh, to form the reduced guns or oxidized guns. And we, we did a lot of chemistry, all our iron type. And, and actually, uh, I argue with, I didn't show slides in here, but other sedimentologists and paleontologists take on setting and then they wrote in the library, there's a S type, you know, S type um, granite. But we did a lot of chemistry, you know, and XRF, many, many XRF of the intrusions. Uh, we don't find, you know, the S type, most are iron type. And it's consistent with copper and gold. Most of the S-type become, uh, you know, tin and tungsten. So they, these are HR also very similar ages, you know, uh, Permian mostly, you not know, Permian you know, middle middle triasis or late triasis. Uh, so we we don't see this magma chemistry, you know, is the uh, control or, or you know the um, then input to the for the lot of paper, you know, uh, magma, magma, you know, porphyry systems oxidized, oxidized, um, and and maybe it's ilmenite, you know, sometime ilmenite series granite or S type they might come up reduced, reduced magma and reduced fluids, but we don't see here in 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 you know, porphyry system or, or in the Loire Bell or the currently, the one we are working, all are high type and then oxidized fluids comes. But we don't see why, why you know, the uh, foot apart, a lot of reduced they are sulfur isotopes. So these facts are, are telling us, you know, the, the host lithology is controlling how much redundant, redundant, you know, reduce sequence, uh, may, may, it not necessarily it may be shale, it might be, you know, carbonaceous limestone. Uh, it's chem, there's a lot of redundant in, in the system. So the oxidized fluid comes in, react with the, these redundant, and then become a fluid can reduced. So that, that's the, um, uh, I, I will, you know, argue about it. All right, is that okay, Ayman? Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much, Professor Giza. Yeah. All right, uh, is there any more question? Any other question? Um, while waiting the other question, perhaps I have a simple question, Professor Kinzo. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering about sulfur speciation. For me, it's clear that we have reduced sulfur and even ferrous iron in the reduced carn as pyrrhotite. My question is, did you ever find any oxidized sulfur 
sulfate mineral, for example, in the oxidized carbon? Yeah, um, no, no, I, I don't see, uh, we don't see any, any, um, you know, pyrite or whatever, you know, uh, oxidized sulfur species. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we don't, we don't find it, not, not as see. also in inclusion. We see I a lot see. of like hematite in the oxidized scans mm -hmm. and in, in reduced scan, we don't see the hematite. I see. But we don't see any any other sulfate like barium, barium, you know, sulfate mineral or gypsum. No, we, we don't see. It. Yeah, I see. We only see hematite. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Any other question? Okay, Mr. Ting Tin Aung Min, please. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Thank you. And first of all, I very appreciate your presentation. Say at Dr. Yeah. Uh, my question is: uh, Is there any difference between prograde and retrograde geochemistry, uh, especially for flu inclusion? Because these two. Can I hear you? Hello, Mr. Tin. Type, type in, you can type in. Hello? Yeah. Can you clear? Yeah, no. make, make, make it again, uh, ask the question again. Yeah. And yeah. then the retrograde uh, and, and the uh, prograde. Prograde, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, maybe uh, there may be a little bit change in geochemistry for retrograde and prograde. So do you have any data about the fluid inclusions between these two types? Is yeah. the same or different? Yeah, we, we see quite the uh, difference. And mm -hmm. like uh, you see for long, for long we see the early prograde, you know. So we found fluid inclusion in the garnet. So that, that fluid looks like, you know, uh, likely to be a uh, prograde fluids because in mm -hmm. the prograde stage in the garnet, uh, it's not 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 really you know it's very rarely rarely we found you know even if we found very small uh, mm -hmm. in the garnet, but we have this data uh, in in the early prograde stage, and most of the retrograde stage are low temperature. I think the um, Temperature, that, that's why I, I mentioned it, you know, people, I don't know why they call retrograde. It's, it's a cooling state. Most of the re retrograde fluids are uh, low temperature, you know, lower than the prograde. Uh, and, and early, you know, prograde state is right after intrusion form, intrusion make it, you know, the um, audio and contact monopolism. And then yeah. after that, the fluid pump up early stage and that form the carnet and peroxide. So these stage are theoretically, I mean, high temperature, high temperature, you know, right after contact metropolitan, which is 600, 500. So maybe 500, 400, that become a prograde, theoretically. And then the cool and later a lot of amphiboles, you know, actinolite, chloride, this comes in, a lot of water in it, cooler. And then sometimes the mineralization, you know, pyrite and sulfide and gold comes later, sometimes at the early stage, uh, depending on the, you know, uh, I, I just mentioned to Arif, you know, chloride complex can be coming into as a, you know, gold and, and copper is all right. Copper also by sulfide, com chloride complex, by sulfide complex can be formed. And then late stage also, if temperature is high enough, the copper can still come in. And the gold is okay, you know, 250 uh, by sulfide. But for the chloride complex, you have to have a 350 or so more higher temperature. So the, the good thing about these scans is double chance, you know, and early progress stage, the, the fluids 
uh, can bring in copper and gold. And then late stage, retrograde stage, uh, like like in, in the um, Sipon, you know, there's a lot of copper comes in later retrograde stage, and then super gene enrich and then flatline. So it, it's just a, uh, there is a different. When we, we look at fluid inclusion also, we see in general, the early, early garnet, uh, you know, progress states are higher than the, the retrograde status, uh, cooling status, and then later even cross the instance. So there, there is a, uh, sometime, you know, as we discussed with the Arif, uh, the salinity is, we don't know, uh, you know, why sometime, you know, salinity reach in the retrograde stage. Uh, and you know maybe different, but there's something sedimentary, sedimentary you know brine not coming in. We we don't know, yeah. So there is a, a, a you know significant change, discernible change in chemistry, uh, salinity and temperature between the two stages. For mineral explorations, uh, there uh, which one is better for economically feasible, re reduce or oxidize? Um, I, I think mm -hmm. oxidized one will be the good one. Reduce is, uh, as far as we see, uh, high grade, but you know, smaller, small deposits. Uh, mm -hmm. So like um, many other, you know, in the long-term program in Australia or in Indonesia, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of study already done and, and you know, he had big buffery uh, next to the, you know, scan. And so magnetite, oxidized scans are, are they more, more, you know, uh, potential or looking for it. Uh, although reduced scans are also, you know they are small. We are we are they are very hybrid. So it, it it depends on you know your your focus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for the question. And we have uh, another question from Aung Miu, Mr. Aung Miu, please. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to know about the uh, uh, gold deposit, in mo mostly gold uh, we are finding in Baba, this uh, Myanmar, this is in the Kwas Bay or Bakmatai. Uh, that is Bakmatai, we were talking about the new metallite stage. That means it's a retro or pro? Retrograde uh, or progress? So this is just, I only want to know that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, will, I would put it this one as a retrograde stage. You know, oh, yes. most of the pragmatai are later, you know, late, late stage. Late stage, yeah. so that's why yeah. new metallite stage, so that's why I mean, yeah. the magmatic, they are calling the new metallite stage, that means the late, yeah. uh, late stage, also. Yeah, so yeah, that is a ritual yeah. grave, yes. Yeah. Thank cool. you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Aumo. And we have another participant here raising his hand. Please, Mr. Fadlin. I okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. So, uh, uh, such a nice presentation, uh, Professor Kim Zhao. So, uh, I would like to uh, ask you about uh, uh, why why the the, the scans magnet uh, oxidized scans it's more associated with kappa, but the the reduced scan is uh, more associated with the gold. So what happened? What 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 the factor uh, as a control about that? Um, no, not necessarily. Sometimes not not in this system. Sometimes uh, reduced uh, scan also that there can be a copper in there. Depends on you know control of the temperature, and and because higher temperature copper can come in. Uh, like I, I mentioned it, you know, uh, in the reduced scan, uh, uh, 
the the fluid is low temperature, so the copper cannot come in. If that temperature is high enough to transport copper, it, it can come in copper also. Yeah. So it's it's the um, uh, control of the uh, the, the chem, uh, condition of the you know temperature, time and condition, and saline. And even if low temperature, if saline, you can transport copper also. So uh, the goal of you have to have a higher temperature. If there is a higher temperature, you can't transport by sulfide gold, but chloride can come in. So it's, it's, you must have the salinity is high. So it depends on these two conditions, you know, temperature and salinity. So it, it, it is in both you know, uh, system and, and either copper or gold or both can come in and depend on the, you know, fluid, fluid temperature and salinity. Okay. Understood. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Fadlin. Is there any other question? Perhaps from students. Okay, uh, Mr. Abner, please. Uh, thank you very much, Professor, for the good presentation. I would like to ask two questions. Yeah. Uh, the first question is on the age of your of the scans, mm -hmm. and uh, you put more emphasis on rhenium and lead that you explained a little bit, and then you left out uh, not so much emphasis you did, but on argon, and this is like younger age uh, depos yeah. can deposit. Is yes. there probably a reason why you decided to emphasize on lenium and lead? Yeah. And the second question is um, on the salinity, which is quite high. And yeah. uh, looking at uh, the intrusions. Now, uh, is it possible that uh, the scan could also be a secondary remobilization, or let's say it probably could also remobilize a sentiment, a pre existing sentimentary deposit and enrich it at the scan as a conduct or might be favorable geochemistry site. Yep. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, all right. Uh, the first question is the um, geochronology. Uh, and and we discount a lot of what uh, is the argon and argon argon um, because you know potential argon and argon argon can you know leak the argon uh, when you heat it up by the intrusion or metamorphisms or structure. So like argon, argon and potassium argon, uh, like tectonic and sedimentology people, especially tectonic people used a lot along the fall. So they, they use these argon, argon ages, potassium argon ages, time of the movement. Yeah, time of the movement. Hello. So we, we found the argon and what is argon and argon are not reliable because we know, you know, by the stratigraphy, by the geology, the age of intrusion. And like um, in, in Malaysia, also we see discordant, you know, uh, the, the ages of zircon. Zircon is good thing about zircon is the, you need to heat it up 1500 to reset the age. So very robust. So that's why. Uh, Intrusion is like sometimes we found, you know, uh, triacid, but when you do the argon, argon, it just give it criticious. 
So it, it's telling us the intrusion form in the subcluster level in the trice and then uplifted due to tectonics or eroded of something. So it's exposed. So that they, they become uh, younger ages. So that, that's why uh, we're not prepared to use the, uh, and then we have a lot of evidence. Uh, these argon, argon and potassium argon are not reliable, but again, uh, depend on the, um, you know, we call blocking temperature. That my site is a very bad, like 200, and then you got a bio diet, uh, 250, and then homeland maybe, you know, 300. So sometime, uh, no matter what heating, uh, the, the blocked, they blocked the, you know, when you, you, these things started, clock started forming, and then they blocked it. So that temperature is not enough to, to change it. So that become like we found homeland or we sometimes it's good. We, we have these consistent with the other intrusion ages. So again, uh, you're talking about uranium and osmium of the uh, So these are the age of mineralizing because this is a sulfide mineral. And, and then you can get this age um, uh, to find the age of mineralization. But again, it's now uh, sometimes these moly ages is a bit you know older than uh, the intrusion age. So it's something uh, the initial ratio of the um, and then um, blocking temperature of the uranium osmium of the moly can happen. So it has to be careful. That's why we did a lot of age dating. And then we, you know, compare all the ages together and which are, you know, reasonable age coming up for the intrusion as well as the age of mineralization. Now people are doing, you can do now, Garnet. So a lot of now in China, uh, people are coming out now. We can also date now doing a lot of Garnet to get the age of mineralization and also Cassitride. Now, so a lot of people are coming out with We are also doing cassitride, uh, especially in Myanmar and Southeast Asia. So, so these ages are age of mineralization. Cassitride is a mineral. And, and also we can take the garnet. So that might give you the you know, age of mineralization, another constraint. Uh, so there, there's a different, um, different technique depending on the, uh, you know, Oh, because we we don't we don't believe for for us is not reliable for argon argon and potassium argon. It might be okay for as I mentioned you know, structural structural you know study uh, giving you the you know age of uh, deformation. What is another one? Or oh, salinity? Yeah, yeah salinity yeah. is a good question. Uh, I mean, um, uh, uh, removalization also uh, there is a uh, I work on many other, you know, deposit styles and types, and uh, so it can be remobilized, uh, especially you know UHMS form, and then later remobilized in another system form. Uh, and I work on my PhD on Rosebury with UHMS and the scan comes in, and then the. the uh, intrusion content and scan form even on not necessarily in limestone even on the you know uh, the audible you know form uh, but we don't see any any evidence of you know earlier earlier you know pre mineralization and and later enrichment by the you know uh, scan system uh, not not in our in our you know deposits all right, thank you, Professor. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Any other question? Yeah, we have a participant here raising his hand. Please, Mr. Yulfikar. Hello, Mr. Yulfikar. Okay, thank you, Pak 
Sulfati. Yeah. Uh, my name is Zulfikar. Uh, now I have a project in West Java, Indonesia. It's about PBZN scan deposit. And in my project, uh, intrusion is uh, reach of horn blend, horn blend decide for theory. And based on my uh, literature, the oxidized uh, the horn blend rich is because of oxidized magma. But uh, uh, in the scan, there is uh, it was by limestone. And based on Mr. Uh, Proskin, uh, the risk of pyrotite is uh, reduced uh, magma or reduced scan. Uh, what what your opinion, Proskin? Yeah. Uh, that, that would be very interesting. Uh, that's the other question comes in. We also see something in some of the metal, also in 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 you know mango bar scans in uh, Malaysia, uh, and also uh, we found other reduced scans in the in the Vietnam. So I, I think you got to assay it. Uh, I don't know how your assay coming up, uh, and and whether that would be you know. Um, becoming a reduced scan or, or oxidized scans or, or maybe, you know, both system maybe, you know, depends on the fluid reaction and forming the system. So it is uh, from here, you might, you might, the first thing you you be doing is the, uh, do you see any garnet or peroxy uh, early progress stage mineral? And if you see this one, you probed it, whether they are the copper scans or coal scans, whatever, you know, see the Jerry, uh, Larry Mena system, although it's not uh, perfect, uh, you know, telling you the, uh, the coal scans or copper scans, uh, but it gives you some constraint. So if you have a carnel paroxene, uh, you, you probe it, see how you go. Homeland is mostly, this is the retrograde stage. I mean, homeland externalized, these are coming, coming into uh, late retrograde stage. So you have to see these are, uh, I, I show you the, uh, you know, late stage uh, externalized homeland and then sulfide, sulfide comes in and, and, you know, with or without, you know, pure dye. So you, you have to look at the, uh, when you look, explore for scan and, and you, you have to do, you know, uh, biogenesis, uh, you know, scan mineral, mineralogy or microscopy, how these scans and, you know, the scan assemblages and all assemblages relate. And after that, you see what time your goal comes in, uh, you know, what stage, uh, and goal. So it, it's might be a good start for looking at the, you know, to understand the system first. And then you can, you can decide, you know, whether you leave it or you, you do more exploration together with your essay, you know, where, where, where the goal, uh, uh, what type of goal you are finding electrons or any bismuth. So, so I, I think uh, it might be a good step to go, to go forward and then maybe later vector to, you know, offering. I do consulting. <laughs> Ajul Fikar. Oh yeah, makasih. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Prof, for your mm. uh, presentation. And uh, I just was, I saw you do it. You compare what you're doing in the uh, Myanmar and what, and uh, with data from the Indonesia, especially Papua. I just want to know about yeah. What uh, uh, what do you think about the uh, mineral uh, scan in Big Carson and Kuanagon? It's a uh, uh, oxidized or uh, reduced scan. I think that's. No, I, I I think the the Papua scans are oxidized. 
a lot of magnetite in there. Yeah. In, 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 that's why you found a porphyry there, also next to, to the to the scans. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's good for you know, explorer for porphyry. Yeah. And and Myanmar is still we have to do a lot of work, and uh, I just mentioned Myanmar scans in Myanmar and also scans in, in Malaysia. We like to do more work, uh, and. And Gumba is also, you know, very interesting scans, Gumba scans. We did a lot of, uh, quite a few dating, uh, age dating for Molly. And so we, we know the age of, you know, age of the mineralization and age of intrusion. But we have to document, you know, a lot more on the, um, you know, chemistry. Uh, and, and then the biogenesis, basically, you know, when, when the gold comes in. Uh, and in Srinivon, it's also very interesting in Myanmar. Uh, there's a paper by Ning Ying Sen. She did a doctor Ning Ying Sen. She did a PhD, PhD on that deposits and published in Result Geology. So, uh, but she hasn't done H dating yet. So we 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 are following up. She also the uh, we did a bit of H dating now. Uh, on, on that process. So uh, I think Explorer should, you know, um, work together with the um, the um, the university people, with the student to to characterize the system. You know, what what is mineralogy and you know what what is the uh, petrology of these scans, and and especially the, the, the these are not not like other deposits, we need to do a lot of more microscopy. And even you might find an humano. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Prof. Yeah. Thank you very much, Pak Ilfikar. Uh, we have another question from Mr. Abdi, please. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Um, yeah. I'm D from University of Pembangunan Nasional Veterinary Jakarta. I'm an undergrad undergraduate student. Sir, if I might ask, um, because from the questions that have been asked before and the explanations, I wonder about, hey, is there any case that uh, professors find it hard to determine which one is uh, oxidized or the reduced carn? in any of your research, sir, and mind to explain, if you don't mind, please explain, why do you find it hard to determine which is oxidized and which one is the reduced one? Thank you, sir. Um, we, we, for the granite, granite, uh, no, not much problem for age dating. You know, the best uh, material, the best rock types, to do H dating, uranium lead dating. So it's, it's there will be no issue for, you know, oxidized scans or reduced scan. Uh, but mind you, if basalts, gabbro are very hard, there's not much of sarcom. So when you get even an endocyte, sometimes very hard to find sarcom. We, we did a lot of work in uh, central Thailand, you know, Komasu did a PhD on the uh, chart tree is hosted in the endocyte. So we have, a, you know, separated sarcon after sarcon, you know, uh, rock sample after sample. We find only two, three sarcon. So, so um, sarcon is the, um, for the, you know, oxidized scans or reduced scans. That, that's a no problem. Diorite, scanner diorite, uh, granite, monzonite, no problem. We found a lot of sarcon. So it, it is okay for, for us. Thank you, sir, for such an explanation. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Abdi. Um, is there any other question? If there is no more question, I think we can close this uh, Q&A 
session because uh, our time is up. So uh, again, Professor Kinzau, thank you very much for your talk. It was very interesting. I think it will be uh, good for us, especially for students who study about mineral deposit. And yeah, thank you so much again. Uh, we wish the best for you. So mm. pleasure. If you have, yeah, thank you so Keep much. In Dutch. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks for inviting me. It's, it's my honor to, to yeah. give up this talk. Yeah, thank you very much. You're and welcome. Visit, visit, visit Tasmania if you can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, thank okay. you so much. <laughs> All right, so uh, because our time is up, I would like to return this time to uh, uh, Mutiara. Okay, Mr. Adi Sartono, as the Master of Ceremony, thank you very much to Professor Kin Zhao as the speaker for the information and knowledge which have been given to us. Thank you very much to Mr. Adi Sulaksono as the moderator of this event and the audience entirely. This lecture is a documentation to all the art the participants. Please activate your camera on. Okay, uh, starting from slide one. One, two, three. Slide two. One, two, three. Last one, slide three. One, two. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we finally come to the end of today's agenda. Let us close the seminar with prayer. May the event which we have to solve is beneficial for all of us. Pray start. Amen. Uh, those are the agendas we have presented to you all. We hope you all learned something from this event. Even guiding our offense of one here, please forgive me. Thank you so much for your kind, cooperative, and attention. And I will inform you all, um, this webinar Wait. will be uploaded on YouTube, MG MG ESC Open Veteran Yogyakarta. See you on the next occasion. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Prof. Kinjo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.